This is the Holy Ghost Forum in Murraysville, Pennsylvania, and uh, I'm Gary Bailey, and we are going to talk about the things of the Spirit. Praise God. The Bible tells us in, uh, I believe it's 2 Timothy 3 and verse 5, Paul warned about having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. Christianity is about power. We, uh, it, it's the power of God that saved us and it's the power of God that keeps us and uh, it's the power of God that causes us to live and walk in a victorious manner. Amen. Jesus said it in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. He said, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you'll be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. If there ever was a day, uh, the day in which we live, we need the power of God, and we need to demonstrate God's power. Praise God. So Amen. with me on the forum is Pastor Gary Rudder. He pastors blood Church. His associate pastor is Pastor Rob Laro. And they're here in Murraysville, just a suburb just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And to my right is Deanna Bazuska. Bazuska. <laughs> I remember that last name. And Dave Kreider. Dave Kreider. So they're sitting in on the forum with us, and we're just going to have a good time. But what I'd like to do is... Uh, you know, just begin to praise God. You know, the Bible says uh, that we ought to enter into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise Amen. and be thankful to his name. Praise God. Let's worship God just a few moments. Father, we worship you and those of you that are that are with us. Just go ahead and worship with us. I see here that Lisa Fox is with us. Uh, Lisa, let us know where you're from if you can Praise God. But go ahead and worship God with us. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. Father, we love you. We praise you. We magnify the name of Jesus. We magnify the name of Jesus. Praise, 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 praise be unto the Lord. Bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. My son in law is on here tonight. Good to see you, Matt. Praise God. Thanks for for logging on here. Praise you, Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Almighty, who reigns forevermore. Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift our voice in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises. 
as we declare your mighty words. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns forevermore. Praise God. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Joel Rowland, just my son-in-law, just uh, logged on here, and Joel Rowland, missionary to Costa Rica, he logged on. Now he says, uh, someday I'll join you on the set. Well, you're welcome to join us tonight, Joel, praise if you Lord. want to. He's about an hour away, I think, though. Uh, praise God. I, we should have talked here today, Joel. It would have been good for you to uh, get down here and get with us. But uh, at any rate, yeah, we're we're glad you're on. And uh, uh, welcome your comments and, and your uh, input. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to share something that I think is was kind of interesting here in the book of Exodus. And uh, we, uh, I'm not sure what direction we'll take here tonight, but uh, um, this was kind of on my uh, heart. I was thinking about this. And uh, do we all have uh, King James Bibles up here or is any other versions? I get to what you want. I have a new King James. Okay, I, uh, no, I, uh, King James is fine because all the other versions really uh, don't, uh, uh, they don't do justice to this verse. But uh, here in Exodus chapter 6 and verse 3, uh, he says, And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob. Uh, he's talking about the age of the patriarchs. He said, um, uh, by the name of God Almighty, I appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Now think about that. When we think about uh, uh, what we know of God, we know according to the scripture here, that uh, God only revealed himself to the patriarchs, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty, but he didn't unveil and reveal himself as God Jehovah. Now, the name Jehovah or Yahweh uh, literally means unchangeable God or eternal God. And uh, we also could include the redemptive names of Jehovah. Now, we do see uh, Abraham when uh, he uh, offered up Isaac uh, as God commanded him and then, then the ram was found in the thicket. Uh, Abraham mentioned Jehovah Jireh, but God did not reveal himself as Jehovah Jireh. Now, uh, the King James is very clear on this. Now, the other translations say, that he didn't reveal his name as Lord. And nearly all of them, New King James and uh, uh, the ESV and the uh, uh, New American, all of them, all basically. All of the lesser translations. All of them. <laughs> yeah, let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, but the point is that the King James is very specific and very clear, and we can see. You know, it says, uh, some of these other translations say that he didn't reveal himself as Lord, but the, you can go back through the whole book of Genesis and see that Lord's all the way through it. So the, uh, those translations aren't real accurate, but the, the King James is very accurate in that it tells us uh, up until this point, God did not unveil and reveal himself as Jehovah, only as Lord Almighty or God Almighty. Uh, so what am I... What am I trying to say here? What I'm trying to say is that uh, you might know God in a certain aspect, in a certain way, but that doesn't mean you know him in his fullness and in all the ways that he's unveiled himself to us. It's like 
it's like me. Now, I have a relationship with these folks, and and they know me at, in a certain way, a certain level, uh, some more than others here. Uh, but uh, there's parts of my life that you don't know anything about. You know, and all of us are like that. We have uh, uh, private aspects of our life that only our spouse knows about. Uh, and sometimes even between spouses, a husband and wife, uh, there are things that the wife doesn't know about the husband, even though he, she might know him better than almost anyone. Or the husband might know about the wife. There may be aspects he doesn't know about her, even though he might know her better than uh, anyone else. But what I'm trying to say here is that uh, we need to press in and get a greater revelation of God. Amen. And this is what Moses is saying here. Uh, let me read it again. I appeared, God is actually speaking to, uh, to Moses. And he says, I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. And I think, uh, I think of this in the realm of uh, healing, for instance. There's so many in the body of Christ. They know Jesus as Savior. They know Jesus as Lord. They know uh, a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Uh, but they don't know Jehovah Rapha. They don't know that he's, uh, that, that he's their healer. He might, uh, they might not know him as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that, uh, that provides for their need. And so we see in the, uh, throughout the Old Testament that, uh, uh, there are seven redemptive names associated with the name Jehovah. And Jesus in the New Testament said, I've manifested all thy names. To thy people, and what a wonderful thing! If you knew Jesus, you got to know God, and got to know who He was. But uh, we look at uh, the uh, redemptive names: Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. Jehovah Jireh, uh, the God who sees ahead, and the the Lord who provides, provider of all needs. Uh, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord and Captain, the Lord who lead. Uh, a captain and banner over our life. He leads us into victorious battle. Uh, then there's uh, Jehovah Rea, the Lord and shepherd of of the sheep, to know God as a shepherd in our life. And then there's Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. Uh, Jehovah Shama, the Lord who's present with us constantly. And Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. And what God wants to do for those uh, who will, whosoever will, he wants us to press into him and know him as intimately as we possibly can. And, and uh, really, I have to say that one issue in the church today is we don't, we don't know God. We don't know him in all his redemptive revelation. And uh, Jesus said it in the New Testament, and you'll know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. And that knowing is, uh, it's the same word that Adam knew Eve, his wife, and they produced a child. In other words, it's an intimacy with God. And God wants us to press in and know him more intimately. Pastor Gary, anything to add to some well, of that? Well, God is... The God who writes on our inward parts, he writes on our heart, Yeah, and it's a heart thing. And that's the essence is to know him in the spirit. We tend to relate to everybody mentally, emotionally, reasonably, logically, but God is spirit. Yeah. And if we're not engaged spiritually with him, we yeah. can't know him like right. you're suggesting. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So we, God is a spirit and we relate to him. Yeah. In a spiritual way, that's uh, I believe that's why Jesus t uh, told Nicodemus, "You must be born again." Yeah. Not yeah. Uh, it's not just a head thing, uh, knowledge a head knowledge of God. It's not just a, a physical. You know, we don't relate to God necessarily in a physical way, but it's a spiritual. It's heart to heart. To to uh, to the. The mentality of man, there will always be a mystery concerning God because we're not capable of 
understanding who made us. Yeah. And when we commune spiritually, we ex- access mysteries that we otherwise cannot know. Yeah. And even that, for instance, when you're speaking in tongues, sometimes the Holy Spirit reveals the mystery, and sometimes he does not. It's still a mystery yeah. in my head. Yeah. And so the realm of the Spirit uh, must be apprehended spiritually. You can't intellectually apprehend Spirit. Do you yeah. think maybe God was going to reveal himself here <laughs> to them? Because they did not know him as Jehovah Lord. Yeah. Well, and I think that was what he was, was telling. He was saying. Yeah. He said, now they're going to know me this way. Exactly. And, and we and God has to be revealed because we don't yeah. know him and can't see him. Yeah. So in this aspect, he's saying they know me as God Almighty, but they don't know me as Jehovah the Lord. Okay, or whatever yeah. you want to call that. Well, but, even the ones here just came out of Egypt. Yeah. You know. So yeah. Hey, what he said? I love this. He said he's going to. Um, Children in bondage, and I have remembered their covenant, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, you know, under the burden of sin. It's just wonderful when you see that, that he's saying he's going to reveal himself this way to them, and that's how he revealed himself to us. As a redeemer. Yeah. Yeah, a redeemer from sin. The burden, you know, the burden of our state. Yeah. Hallelujah. uh, That's powerful. People need to know that God did not create them a beast of burden. No, he didn't. Yeah. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And there's people that are killing themselves in the name of ministry. Oh, God's not pleased with look that. Look as he says. Hey, uh, hold, hold on a minute. You, you folks that are watching, uh, let us know. Give us some feedback. Make sure that uh, that you can hear us, uh, hear us well. Uh, I know sometimes we talk a little low or we're a little, uh, a little distant from the microphone, but just want to encourage everybody to speak up. Make sure that, uh, uh, but let us know if you, if for some reason you're not hearing us clearly. Uh, go ahead. He uh, just, I just Deanna. love this because it relates to us so much. And it says, and I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel from the Egyptians, uh, keeping in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Okay. Yeah. Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. Wow. I just, it's so just a few verses yes. down from uh-huh. verse 3 where he says, I'm going to let you know who I am yep. by my name, Jehovah. Mm-hmm. He begins to share there that is. he's uh, a That's redeemer and that is. he sets the captives free. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. This yeah. is what Jesus did to us. Praise the Lord. Praise and, God. And let, let me say something else about that. You know, the Bible says there, and we just you just read it, Deanna, that the people were groaning yes, out in yes. their bondage. And uh, the Bible tells us this. I don't know the exact scripture. I know in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 7 could be 1, and uh, Luke uh, chapter 11. But there's a scripture in the Old Testament. It might be even Jeremiah 3. 33 but the bible tells us if you seek me ye shall find me if you seek for me with all your heart right. praise god and sometimes this is a case or i'd say a hundred percent of the time uh you know we don't know uh god at a particular level because we're not seeking him right. with all our heart so god wants us to to seek him. Now, the Bible also tells us, uh, Isaiah 25, somewhere in there, that uh, when, uh, uh, oh, how's it put it? I, I can maybe find it here and quote it exactly, but basically it, it says, when, uh, when we were uh, uh, bowed down with burdens, then we poured out our heart in prayer. Uh, in other words, when things get hard, that's when we start turning and pressing into God. And I think that's what's happening in the nation. The people are groaning out of, yeah. out of the, the evil that was on us and crying out, and God extended a hand of mercy. We have to keep pressing in sure. to come into that land, you know? Yeah, and the more we press in, the more God's going to unveil. I mean, a lot of times, if you look throughout history, Great times of outpouring and great times of revival were preceded by great times of of difficulty and mm-hmm. trouble and problems. 
And that's when people begin to pour out their heart uh, and cry out to God in prayer. And God unveiled himself. God revealed himself. He's and, doing it now because the scripture says that when the, the unrighteous are in power, that the people groan, <laughs> okay? Yeah. So the people were groaning, you know, and now he he extended a hand of mercy. We have to keep pressing in. We can't just let up. Yeah. We press in until we come and get free. Yeah, amen. Gary, the, uh, the names of God that you, you read there, mm -hmm. spoke of, all show the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. They all show his mercy. They all show this God who is ready at any moment. Just, and he had to reveal himself to a people that they knew nothing about. Yeah. Because they went for 400 years without really knowing a God. So he had to reveal. But Jesus Christ came and displayed himself, and he depicted all those names. Hallelujah. Yeah. I have manifest. He said that in John 17, I've manifested in his prayer for the people. I've manifested all thy name mm -hmm. yeah. to this people. Hallelujah. And in those names and all that goodness, you know, God is always going to be the same no matter what. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he's always ready to take us and lift us up and put us right where he wants us to be. Praise With you, a Jesus. heart there. I mean, faith is full of joy. Yeah. Yes, it is. And like Amen. you said, Seeking him, you will find him. And the, you know, people talk about mountaintop experiences and valleys and everything. I don't, I really don't believe in them because God never changes. It's me that gets into a valley experience or a mountaintop experience. Amen. God says that His river is always flowing. Yeah. And I can get in any time I want. It's how <clears throat> thirsty am I? Yeah. How hungry. How much do I desire to be, to have what God has? To be with him. It's yeah. always the same with him. Amen. Amen. That's good. Thank you, Lord. Um, actually, what I was, uh, one scripture I was looking for here, and I'd, <coughs> I'd quoted it, but it's in uh, Jeremiah 29. He says, uh, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. So God wants to, I, I believe it's his desire uh, for us to get to know him. You know, I, I have people that come into my life, and, uh, you know, I'll talk to people, and never once, I mean, even family. You know, they'll never ask me, well, how's, what's happening in your life? You know, what's going on with you? Uh, I like it when people are interested in me. And I'll tell you, God likes it when we get interested in him. Amen. He's interested in us. He knows all about us and wants to know all about us. And uh, he, uh, he wants us to know him. Amen. To... How he does things. You know, it's like uh, Moses. Moses was someone who sought after the Lord. And maybe someone can give me the reference. It's in the book of Psalms someplace. But he revealed his, he showed his acts or his deeds unto the children of Israel. But he showed his ways unto Moses. Amen. So God wants, uh, and I believe that that was pleasing to God. God is looking for those that, Oh, are you interested in me? You want to know about me? Well, here I am. I want to show and tell all that I am and uh, everything that I am. Dave, you have anything to add to, uh, add to this conversation? I do, but I'm not quite formulated. Not quite yet. Okay, that's fine. Praise God, Pastor Gary. Anything? Thank you, Jesus. For surely I would unveil and reveal myself to those who seek me with all their heart. 
Press in and look unto me, for I have wonderful secrets to reveal to you, hidden things that many do not know. But I will willingly and freely show them to you as you seek my face. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Equate their relationship with God with their relationship to church. Yeah, I feel they go to church. You know, I'm, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing, and, and this is my relationship with God. Yeah, and God never says my re- my relationship is with, between me and all your friends in church. My right, relationship is between you and me. Right, and my relationship is only as good as you make it. Right. You don't commit it to it, uh, then you have a surface relationship, and you're like that seed that's thrown on the stony ground. First time the sun comes up too hot, you wither and die. And then you wonder, well, where was God? Yeah, the same place He's always been. Yeah, just waiting for you. Uh, that's very true, Dave. Uh, you only get out of a relationship what you put into it. You know, if you go to apply for a job and you tell them, well, I'll be available one hour a week. Uh, they may or may not h- hire you, but it's going to take you a while to know something about that company. But if you, if you go in and you make yourself available for 40 hours or 60 hours, you're going to know that place inside and out. I remember when I went to work for uh, Rex Humbard Ministries, our first shift was 12 hour shifts, you know, and, and so you got to know the people, you got to know the job uh, very well. And uh, that's true with anybody. Spend time, you know, you want to have a good marriage, take time with your spouse. You want to have a good relationship with your children, you got to spend time with them. You know, people people talk about <coughs> about quality time, and, you know, I'm not negating that. That's good if that's all you can do, but... But uh, people and God, we need quantity time. We need to take time with our spouse, take time with our children, take time with uh, our friends. And if you want to have a closer relationship, you take the time. And that's true with God. You need to go by the Spirit. With God is Spirit. He seeks after those who worship Him in spirit and truth. And uh, by going to his word and talking and praying and worshiping in the spirit, uh, speaking, and you, you develop a, a, a deeper walk with him spiritually. He is spirit. Okay, and that affects the rest of you. That affects your mind and your body and all your other relationships. God is in it because he's spirit. So we have to go after him in spirit. Amen. That's Psalm 103. Psalm 103. 103, verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Yeah. So Moses got a revelation of why God did what he did. Uh, The children of Israel, they saw his works, all right, but Moses had a greater insight. He knew how to make the mechanism work. Yeah, that's Psalm 103, verse 7. Rob, do you mind hitting that button so uh, we get... uh, um, Keep that going. Uh, yeah, not all the way down. Just make sure it moves. And that's good. Yeah. Good. Yep. Gary, when I'm having communion with the Lord, uh, we normally get to the deeper things of the Spirit after we get through my agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he waits for me to you know, rattle on about my stuff, you know. Yeah. And then we go on to what's important. After yeah. <laughs> and just share with the people, you've been, for the last couple of years now, you've been writing what the Lord's given you, and uh, basically, maybe not every morning, but uh, pretty much every morning, you've been trying to spend uh, time with the Lord, uh, what, two to four hours in the morning? Well, not normally four hours. Sometimes I'll go two, but yeah. usually always an hour or so. An hour or so, yeah. 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 But... Uh, Years ago, I, it seems like yesterday, that uh, the Lord told me to write. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what to think about that. I made a note in my journal. Then later, like a week or two or so, it came to me in prayer again. 
I wrote it down. I still don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. And then uh, another week or so went by, and he said to write again. And I wrote in my journal, write, write, write. Mm. What, what, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So God's talking to you so, to write, and you're not sure what to write at that point. So Rob and I were in here praying one night, and uh, we're just praying in tongues and praying out mysteries. And you have to hit that again, Rob. Just as we're led of the Spirit. Yeah, I did it. And uh, these words came to me. Uh, the money will go and the flowers will fade. <coughs> well, we had just uh, given a friend of the congregation a monetary gift because her dad had died. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so when those words came, I knew that God wanted to give me a word for her. Yeah. So I went and I wrote that down. And it turned out it was a poem because it said, the money will go, the flowers will fade. And as soon as I started writing, fond memories of dad are like afternoon shade. Hmm. And then the whole thing just kept coming. <laughs> you know, That's and I neat. wrote a whole prophetic poem for her to minister in her time. Yeah, I, I mean, if anyone watching is interested in Gary's book, uh, what uh, what's the name of it, Gary? Quiet Time. It's on Amazon. Quiet Time. It's on, yeah, yeah available on Amazon. It's a great yeah. book of poetry. Yeah. There's not much poetry out there these days. It's really a unique niche, but uh, praise God I uh, for it. I find out from my good friend and brother and fellow pastor, Rob, that uh, Francis Frangipane wrote a lot of poems. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, yeah he's a good, and, uh, good man of God. And I, I saw two, uh, uh, it was, the question was raised in another book that I read of a, a prophet that I was reading after. And he asked uh, something about poetry, you know, are you getting poetry? In other words, it was an element that he expected in a prophetic ministry. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't elaborate on it, so I don't know, didn't know where to go with that. But anyway, uh, when the Lord gives you a word, it's not just something he just wants to be nice. Yeah. There's something in it. There's, there's purpose. He, he, yes, God he always wants has you purpose to get it. something. If you let that pass... Why should he even bring it up again? I yeah. mean, you, you let it pass, but often he'll bring the same word two or three times, yeah. wanting you to take hold. What I found is if you'll take what he gives you and write it down, you will get a lot more than just that word. Yeah. But if you don't hold it in high regard and don't count it important enough even to make note of it, then what's he to do? Now, you, you bring up a good point, uh, Pastor Gary, is uh, when we go to prayer and we're, we're, we've got a time allotted or set aside to spend time with the Lord, take a pencil and paper with you. Oh, my, yes. And uh, there, there's two, uh, two reasons for it. Uh, number one, the one you mentioned, is uh, God can, when he does speak to you or if he does speak to you about something particular, you can write it down and remember it yes. for later. The other reason for having pencil and paper is when you're in prayer and you're seeking God, praying, worshiping, thinking, you know, you have your focus on God, uh, the first thing that comes up is in your head, you know, these thoughts float through. So uh, you better take the garbage out uh, <laughs> after you're done here, you know, or you're, if you forget, you know, you're going to be in trouble or, You've got a meeting with so and so, and you'd better finish that paper you were working on, and and so it's like your mind uh, can get so distracted. But uh, you can if, write those down. yeah, if you'll write those down, then you can forget them. You don't have to think about them Absolutely. again, and it keeps your prayer and keeps your focus on what's important at the See, time. When I get those, I write them on my calendar. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. When I get the good stuff, I write it in my journal. Exactly. But you see how you had to keep going back. You kept going back, and you finally got what God wanted. Yes. But if yeah. you would have just said, oh, well, right, right, what, what, and went on your merry way. And this same thing happens when ministering in the spirit, because we had went to um, Eaton Park, and I saw this young girl I hadn't seen for years. And we had a very pleasant relationship years ago. And she, uh, I, she knew me spirit like a spirit, like a spirit mom. And um, when I see, looked in her eyes, I could see defiance and rebellion. And I'm saying to myself, what's that all about? But I didn't say to the Lord, what's that all about? Yeah. I found out later, she had, now she's in sin. And I wonder if I would have at that time, instead yeah. of just wondering in my own mind, trying to figure out what that was about, that was a word of knowledge sure. in a sense that the Lord would have told me. I could have just spoke it and might have freed her. But I'm praying for her now. But you well, found that later. Like we don't press in at the time right. that the Holy Spirit's doing things. And, and some of this, there's a scripture in Hebrews uh, that basically says, by reason of use, we have our, it's uh, Hebrews chapter 5. But uh, by reason of use, our senses are exercised to discern both good and evil. So sometimes God shows shows us things so that uh, we can pray about it and not ever mention it. And sometimes we need to mention it. Well, I feel, and, I feel like I had to mention If I would have said yeah, to her, you might what have, are you doing being so rebellious and defiant? You know better than that. That may have freed her, but I didn't. Sure. I'm pondering my mind what that was about instead um, of just submitting to the Lord. I was referring to Hebrews 5.14. It says, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. And we're applying this to the gifts of the Spirit mm -hmm. or God speaking to us. And he says, uh, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So we learn uh, how to deliver a prophecy, how to deliver a word of knowledge, uh, and you know, you know, yeah, if you get in that, you get in that situation again. I'm going to go ahead and, and share it with yeah. with someone. And sometimes you share something, you say, ah, "That didn't go so well. Maybe I should have just <laughs> prayed about that situation." So you learn, Sense and uh, and really, when it comes to a prophet's ministry, that's the difference between uh, a real prophet. I, I don't even know if I I like to use that terminology because. Uh, uh, but it's the difference between a mature prophet and someone in training. And uh, we don't want, you know, uh, prophets in training can be loaded guns. You know, you don't know when they're going to go off and you better protect yourself. But uh, but as a person grows and develops and uh, uh, matures, he learns when to say things, when not to say things. I want to mention the people that are with us. And by the way, if you're still with us, give us a thumbs up or a, a, a you know a comment or something. <laughs> yeah, thumbs down. But uh, let us know you're still with us. We got Lisa Fox and Matt, my son-in-law Joel Roland is with us, and John Maruka showed up here. He says he can't get on because of Safari, but. Uh, uh, yeah, let us know that you're there. Uh, Annette Garrison. Oh, glad to have you, Annette. Uh, praise God. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, she says hello. But uh, we're talking about knowing God in a greater way. Somebody may have a question. Too. Yeah, if you have a question uh, about anything, just let us know. Uh, we, uh, we'll try to answer them the best we know how. But just talking about the things of the Spirit, uh, talking about pressing into uh, the things of God and uh, all the things he has for us. Uh, I want to know God in a greater way. I tell you, it was, to me, it was a tremendous revelation when I met Jehovah Rapha. I knew him as my Savior. But, wow, he unveiled and revealed himself as Jehovah Rapha, so much so that uh, I, I almost thought in terms that, uh, you know, if anything ever happens, uh, I've got a healer in my life. I've got someone that's available to me. And, and uh, the fear of deadly disease, of dying young, and all the things that the devil can throw at you really uh, went away when you begin to know God as healer and, and have experienced that. Uh, 
uh, and through the years I've experienced uh, God as my healer. You know, when you were well, talking about uh, <clears throat> that maturity in prophetic utterances, yeah. even at the, the, if you want to say the lower end of prophetic, it's edification, exhortation, and comfort. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't leave that area. Even if you, if God gives you a word about something that's not right about somebody, you can turn that to what God actually sees them and their potential. Yeah. You can turn that around. And growing up in uh, being mature in it, first is the love of God in you growing up. Amen. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And in that, the fruits of the Spirit in you. As these things start to mature, then God can trust you more and more with your words. In 1975, uh, there was a man, his name's Bob Jones. He, now, he passed away in 2014, but he's a prophet in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he went to heaven, he stood before the Lord, and he was in a line. And uh, the one question that, got, that uh, Jesus asked everyone that was standing in front of him was, did you learn how to love? Did you learn how to love? And, uh, you, you know, if we could apply that idea to everything we do, whether it's your job, your marriage, your relationship with family, the relationship with your church and, and ministry, uh, <coughs> the question that will be asked of all of us when eternity rolls around is, did we operate in love? Well, I just wrote in my journal, was either today or yesterday, you remember that song, How Jesus Loves? Yeah. I just came to you. I wrote it down, and then I wrote this, through his body. Yeah. That's how he loves. Praise you know, God. Your hands, his voice. Sure. Sure. You know. And that's, that's what we want to increase in, isn't yeah. it, Pastor yeah. Gary? Is uh, we, we want to know the love of God that passes knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. And uh, when I think of this scripture in um, Exodus 3 that we mentioned, he said, I've shown you and unveiled myself to the patriarchs, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty. But to you, I want to reveal and unveil myself as Jehovah. I want to, it's just a greater revelation of God, uh, of the God who loves us. And speaking of loving him, John uh, gave us great insight into the love of God when he said, we love him because he first loved us. Amen. So again, it's getting a revelation of who God is and the fact that he's love. And I, I suppose, uh, and you guys can maybe comment or correct me, but Maybe the greatest revelation we have of God is John's revelation of him. God is love. And, uh, under you can't give what you don't have. If you don't receive his love, you yeah. don't have any love to give. So we have to learn how to receive the love of God yeah. in ourselves, and we have that to share. Yeah. All, those, all those names in the Old Testament, if you really look at them, they're all about the love of God. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's, it's there. Yeah, yeah, amen. And uh, getting to know that love. Uh, and we know the love of Christ that passes knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. Um, Annette is asking the question here. Uh, she said, uh, can you talk about uh, pressing in for a healing? Uh, now, I know Dave and... and uh, <laughs> And uh, Rob have something to say about that. But go ahead, Dave. Pressing in for a healing. Did you, oh, you, you've had some situations where you're close to death's door, weren't you? Yeah, my doctor told the nurses to call him when I died. Yeah. <laughs> there, he was pretty sure I was going to die. Yeah. But probably my first experience after being saved and full of the Holy Ghost was with Jehovah Rapha. I needed a healer. Yeah. Uh, I had gangrene started in my leg. And they were talking wow. about cutting it off. Except I was in a weakened condition and they were afraid that if they did surgery, I would die. Wow. And I had a friend who came I see you still have both legs. <laughs> I had a friend who came to me and said, you know, God will heal you if you'll believe him. 
And I said, well, how do I do that? Because I'm new, I don't know. Yeah. He said, just pour your heart out to God and let him answer you. And mm. so I did. Not just wow. one night, several nights, several mornings, because I was bed. Wow. You're stripped at the bed. And uh, then uh, one day, my leg didn't hurt anymore. Now, if you listen to the doctor, that's because all the nerves are dead in your leg. Yeah. And uh, I had to go to the doctors, and <laughs> he took a look at it, and he says, and I'm not sure, he says, but your color's looking different in that leg. Wow. So let's wait another week or two and see if, if it changes. So I'm thinking it's looking bad. It's probably going to fall off. Yeah. And Gangrene I'm, is no joke. No, I mean, not, once it sets in, it's tough for even medical doctors to reverse that situation. It, and it was, uh, and he's not, he's just giving me antibiotics. You know, he said, yeah. I don't know if this is helping you or not, but come, we'll make an appointment for you two weeks and come back. And you come back and he looked at it and says, it's looking good. It doesn't have that waxy look. He says, it's not smelling. And he's pinching my toes. Can you feel this? I said, yeah. So long story short, after eight weeks, they decided they were wrong. I didn't have gangrene. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing how doctors can change their opinion. But you <laughs> had to press in for that. I had to, I had to keep pushing. And come to the point, it was this. And, and this has been from, I had a, a run of bad experiences health-wise for about 12 years. You can ask Pastor. Yeah. And I'm all, almost always in the hospital. And... Uh, Eleven times. There, there is comes wow. to a point where it's. I trust the Lord. I believe you. I'm healed. Yeah. And I, I don't pray for it no more. I've, I've had cancer twice. They, I had a tumor in my leg. You could poke it. You could feel it. Wow. Doctor cuts it open. There's nothing there. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Nothing there. Praise I, God. Before they took me into surgery, because I'm believing God, when I'm healed, I said, check to see if it's there. You know, do one of them. Uh, Checks. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I hate the machine that makes a lot of noise when they put you in it. Yeah. And they said, yeah, it's right there. Hmm. And uh, they had this, they were going to remove the, the top big muscle in my leg. They had the operating room scheduled for four and a half hours. Oh, my. I was in and out in 35 minutes. There was nothing there. <laughs> Thank you, wow. Lord. Nothing. Praise, Praise God. It was just a little spot on the muscle where something had like been sitting there but even the skin that i guess encapsulates the tumor wasn't there what what a great illustration dave to what we're talking about here tonight uh and and the scripture we started out with was uh, exodus 6 3 where he said i've revealed myself as god almighty to abraham isaac and jacob but uh but by my name jehovah i have not made known but now he's making known who he is and his redemptive reality and and how did you come about that talking to god every night pressing in praying asking god talking to him about reading health and healing the reading yeah. the bible Psalms 103 was my favorite scripture i had a had one of them little gideon bible where you have the new testament and uh, psalms and proverbs when i started off yeah. And Psalms 103 was my favorite. My favorite scripture part of that was, uh, I forget which one it is, but it's bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is in me. Yeah. And he who heals me of all my diseases and forgives all my iniquities. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. God. You know, Gary, the power of God to heal is the word of God mm -hmm. itself. That's what my brother Dave was talking about. Was He held up a little book in church one, one day and he said, I go through this every day. And it was just a little workbook by Charles Chapman, The Power of God to Heal. He spends a lot of time in the Word concerning healing, night and day. Yeah. So what that do, that creates faith for the power of God to work. It becomes revelation that God is this big and the sickness is this big. Yeah. But when you allow the sickness to become a great big giant, you become a grasshopper. Yeah. So it's the word of God that he took in that made this happen for him. Amen. 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 It's named under heaven. is under submission <coughs> to God. Cancer is under submission to God. You, you, have, so. you have to come to a place of faith because a lot of us have knowledge 
of the word of God. But knowledge is not faith. No. And that's a good point to make. And to, uh, when you're Deanna. pressing in, like you, you come to the place that you just accept completely believe God concerning that thing. You yeah. just trust it. You trust him. Yeah. Okay. That he is who he says he is. That he loves you. That he loves you. Yeah. And he sent that word to heal you. Yeah. So, you know, we, I can spot off a lot of uh, scripture, <coughs> but when I come to the point of being tested on that scripture, it's a different story. Sure. You know, you know, you know, and you speak and you can even minister to other people when it happens to you. You know, when you need that scripture, where is your faith in that? Okay. Your faith is in him. And if you're accepting everything he says, trusting him completely, wholeheartedly, pressing in and believing and thanking him because you know without any doubt that what he said is. There's a scripture here in Isaiah 26. It says, Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out, their, uh, they poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. Mm -hmm. So in other words, uh, you know, we think, oh, I don't want any trouble. I don't want any bad things to happen to me. But listen, as I look across the body of Christ, the people that know him best are the ones that went through some difficult, troublesome times, and they pressed in to know him better. And, uh, you know, like it or not, uh, sometimes uh, uh, trials, tribulations, tests are the avenue that we take to know God better. Now, I didn't say that God gave those things to us, and he doesn't bring trouble in our life. In fact, James said, you know, God God won't tempt any man with evil. Uh, but when evil things come, uh, trouble and sickness and problems and difficulties come into our life, that's our opportunity to press into God and to know him better. You know, we Amen. were talking about relationships earlier. The beginning of the relationship I found is after I got saved was the word of God. Yeah. You don't know what you can believe until you read it and it's revealed to you. It's not something that, you know, it's like Deanna was saying, I could tell you something and you may hear it and you may not, but you won't believe it. But if you read it and God reveals it to you, mm -hmm. yeah. He makes it a personal thing to you. I was thinking about Moses, you know, how God uh, unveiled. Now, now, now all of us, everybody has a choice whether you press into yeah. God or whether you don't. And some people don't. Some people just say, well, I, you know, they'll shake their fist at God. Uh, mm -hmm. There's numbers of very prominent atheists today that you, you listen to them talking, you say they're just downright angry because they had a bad experience in church. They had a bad experience when it was related to Christians or to, uh, uh, to God. And, um, they just back off and shake their fist at God. But if, if they would have done the exact opposite, and began to seek for God and seek after God, God could have done amazing things in their life. You know, you look at the history and the background of some some chief men in the world that led the uh, their nation, and uh, they became just despots, uh, evil, wicked men. I think of Charles Dar Dar Darwin uh, went to a seminary at one time. He... He had the opportunity to be a to be a preacher. Same way with uh, Stalin. Stalin w went to a seminary, I believe, and and uh, at some point, instead of seeking after God, they went the opposite way. So it is a choice. When my daughter passed away, I believed up to the last minute she was going to be healed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And when she died, and the enemy comes, it really is a choice that you're going to love God and trust him no matter what because everything in your flesh, okay, just wants to scream, yeah, okay, and be angry. And you have to make a choice. You, I was, you have to believe, to trust, to love. I was thinking about Moses. You know, if, if, you, if you've read the scriptures and see Moses' lifestyle, uh, he was raised with a silver spoon in his mouth uh, in the in the home of Pharaoh, yep. <coughs> raised as an Egyptian. You know, uh, uh, Stephen preaches about him in Acts chapter 7, and uh, he was a man who was taught and trained in the things of uh, 
the things of uh, Egypt and, and knew God. Uh, well, he knew them very well, but he had to make the choice. Uh, when he came of age, he made the choice to seek after God. And so when the Bible says, Psalm 103, he made known his ways unto Moses, that didn't happen by accident. No, it, doesn't. it happened because Moses pressed into him. Uh, hey, uh, here we have Pastor Don Wallabaugh with us, uh, Pastor's Harvest Chapel, great church in Abbottstown, Pennsylvania. He says, it's amazing how many atheists are mad at a good... Uh, at a good God, they say doesn't exist. <laughs> Boy, isn't that the truth? That's true. Boy, that's for sure. About being mad. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that comment, Pastor Don. Uh, we also have Cynthia Rudder is with us. Cynthia Rudder Harvey, uh, Annette Garrison, Gwen's with us. Uh, my wife. Hi, honey. She's at the back of the church, actually. Uh, Anna, Annette Garrison, John Maruka, uh, Joel Rowland, Matt Smith, Lisa Fox. Praise God. Hey, if you're on here, if you have any questions or any comments, we love to hear your comments and and uh, uh, love the interaction. So uh, thanks, uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, but uh, Pastor Don's exactly right. You know, if people would press in and know him, the trouble with a lot of uh, quote unquote atheists and agnostics is they have not taken the time to know God. And uh, Moses, you know, he started. You know, if you look at his life, he started having some feelings towards the Jewish people and thinking about the the, the Jewish God and and trying to defend them and bring deliverance. And he ended up uh, running away from the whole situation and spent forty years in the backside of the desert. But he never he never stopped seeking after God, and he pressed on in. And so that's why. Moses knew his ways, and the children of Israel only knew his acts. Pastor Gary, anything you want to add to that? I think uh, the, the lady asked about a dis for a discussion on healing. Yeah, and that was Annette, I believe. For uh, me, uh, yeah, for all of the vast wealth of knowledge that's in the Bible, it usually comes down to finding one scripture. Yeah, and believing that one. Yeah, you know all the others are true, but it's hard to assimilate everything you can learn and focus on it. Yeah, and again, let's say this is not about knowledge; it's about faith. Right, faith in God. So this God yeah. loves us. God this, loves us. God loves faithful. you. That's why He'll heal you, Amen. deliver you, he teach wants, you, lead you. He wants you to be healed yeah. more than you want to be. Because He loves Amen. us. Yes. There's also presumption. It'll get you in trouble with healing. Uh, talk a little bit about that, I had Dave. A friend who turned atheist because God disappointed him. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking a little earlier about the love of God works in you when you become a tourney. He thinks you can say something to a person. Uh, he had a little boy. I forget what was wrong with him, but he, he was only like three years old. He was in children's hospital. He was basically brain dead. And uh, he went to the hospital because they were going to, you know, disconnect him from the machine. Yeah. He kept saying all the time, God's going to heal my son. God, he's going to wait till the last minute and heal my son. And they put the little boy in his arm, took the machines off, his little chest pumped twice, and he died. Oh. Uh. And he come back, and he was all, you know, he was mad at him. You know, he wanted to fight, which I didn't want to fight because, it had been a pretty good one, yeah. and I'm not sure I would have won. <laughs> but uh, I asked him, I said, because it, it was, I can't remember the name of the disease, but it was a tremendous thing. Mm. And he was a uh, mainline denominational religion who really didn't believe in healing. And I asked him, I said, when was the first time you believed for a headache? You went from believing for nothing to the impossible. To trying to believe God for a, yeah. a and major miracle. Somebody said, you know, God heals. He's never healed you of anything. How could you expect him yeah. to do this? You're, you're watching your kid die. You know he's dying. He's always talking. My son is dying. Son yeah. Is dying. So he knew very little about, about faith, very little about the promise of God. 
Uh, you know, when we think of some major victories uh, in God, many of those victories came uh, on the heels of some earlier preparation. I, I'm thinking of, uh, you know, when, when Saul tried to give David his armor, David said, I'll face Goliath. But, uh, and he tried to put Saul's armor on. It didn't fit. He said, this is not comfortable. You know, I'm, I, I need to just go with what I'm used to. But he'd already killed a lion. He'd already killed a bear. He'd already experienced defending the sheep in the backside of the desert. And uh, David went into that situation with faith and confidence in the God who uh, could uh, who could fight his battles. It takes so. more than just saying, God will heal my child. Yeah. And when I broke a speech to him. I said, you never said you believed God would heal your child. Yeah. You never said you could believe God to heal well, your uh, child. Uh, like you said, they approach God with presumption, ra presumption rather than faith. But uh, it's seven thirty. We're going to be here till eight thirty tonight. Uh, so we're going to take a short break, uh, five or ten minutes. Don't go away. Stay with us. Uh, tell someone else about uh, the uh, the forum. And uh, God bless you. We'll be back in uh, in a few minutes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> 